We're seeing a lot of volatility in the Temecula housing price data last few months, but one stat that's pretty consistent is days on market. It's definitely going up. We'll dig into that starting right now. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm one of the guys on the team. Jessica will be back next week. Speaking of Jessica, last week our video was our regular market snapshot for Murrieta, Menifee, and Temecula, the cities that we work in consistently. That's at the city level. The difference between that video and this one is this is only for Temecula and Scott dives into neighborhoods and areas. After Scott runs through the Temecula neighborhoods, I'm going to jump back in and talk about days on market and pay special attention to Harveston. There's something really interesting going on in there. Hey everybody, Scott here with Active Realty and the Janung team. It's September, which means it's time to look at the real estate market here in Temecula for the month of August. As always, we're gonna kick things off by looking at neighborhood stats. Stick around to the end for my full analysis where I have some pretty shocking figures to share with you concerning average sales prices, inventory, pending sales, and average days on market. Feel free to hit pause anytime during this video to get a closer look at these numbers. I'll just be talking about the total number of homes sold, how many went for over asking price, and the total number of days on market. Without further ado, let's jump in. As always, I will list the total number of homes sold here in the top left corner, along with how many sold for over the asking price and how many average days on market the homes were available before going under contract. Across the bottom, I have the different categories based on the number of bedrooms. Every category where two or more homes are sold, I will include the average price. And if three or more homes were sold, I will include the median price as well. Looking at Morgan Hill, we see that eight homes sold last month two of which went for over asking price with an average of 26 days on market before going under contract. Up next, we have Vail Ranch, where five homes sold last month, one of which went for over asking price and an increase to an average of 20 days on market before going under contract. Moving on to Red Hawk, 11 homes sold last month, only four of which went for over asking price and the average days on market here was 23 days. Continuing on to Wolf Creek, Five homes sold here last month, zero of which went for over asking price. And this is the first neighborhood we've seen in a long time where not a single home within that neighborhood went for over asking price. Average days on market here was 23 days. Jumping over to Harveston now, seven homes sold last month, also zero of which went for over asking price. And the average days on market jumped to a whopping 57 days on average before going under contract. That's an astronomical figure compared to what we've seen in recent months. Coming back down into South Temecula, we have Paseo del Sol, where five homes sold last month, one of which went for over asking price, with average days on market being 17 days. Moving on to Paloma del Sol, we see that 10 homes sold last month, two of which went for over asking price, with an increase to 29 days on market compared to the 15 from the month previous. Here's a neighborhood that hasn't seen a lot of activity in recent months. However, last month, five homes sold, one of which went for over asking price with an average days on market at 15. Continuing on to Temecu Hills, the trend is continuing. 11 homes sold last month, but only one went for over asking price. Average days on market here was 26, also an increase month over month, going right along with what we're seeing in several other communities. Here are some honorable mentions, other communities that didn't quite have the data to create the types of graphs that I had for the other ones. So we have Crown Hill where two homes sold, three bedroom, 610K average. Chardonnay Hills, two homes sold, four bedrooms each, 754K average. And then Rory Paw Ranch where two homes sold, both five bedroom with 821K being the average sales price there. Now onto one of the statistics that everyone's interested in, what is going on with the sales prices overall? So looking at each of these communities, most of the data is actually pretty inconsistent. We see some categories, three bedroom, four bedrooms, or five bedrooms where the price overall is coming down, but other categories in those same neighborhoods where the price has actually increased a little bit. Morgan Hill and Vail Ranch were the only two communities last month that showed a month over month decrease in overall price, whereas Temiku Hills actually showed an increase and there were a lot of inconsistencies, so I can't say with a surety that prices are going down across the board. I'm gonna show you another chart here that reinforces what I'm saying with some more data. What I can confidently say, however, is that the average days on market has increased across the board. With the exception of Paseo del Sol, where it stayed consistent month over month, every community mentioned here showed an increase in days on market overall. That means that homes are hitting the market and staying much longer. 
even just a few months ago, it was really common to see homes on the market for less than a week. And now here we are seeing month over month increases by at least a week, sometimes seven or more days. Homes simply aren't flying off the shelf as quickly as they were several months ago. All right, let me jump in again real quick on this days on market topic. Like I said at the beginning, this is a clear trend across all our cities, Marietta, Menifee, and Temecula. Let me show you here, starting Menifee. We've got the 21 days on market. Check out this trend line. Marietta, also clear trend. And let's focus here on Temecula too. Ever since May, one, two, three, four months, going up to 20 days on market according to our stats. Again, that's single family home only in, in these three cities. Let me show you on a map here where Harveston is. It, it's right in the middle of the north, northern part of Temecula, right here to the 79, that's, that's Winchester Road. Uh, this is Margarita there. This ring road is around the mall. And uh, this is Inez up this way. You can see Inez right there. Here's another interesting thing about the location of Harveston. You see this exit right here? This is under construction. This side heading southbound, this is your French Valley Parkway. And then here, is Date Street. And you'll see that this Date Street forms um, a big part of this Harveston border, but this side over here uh, is also Harveston. You see that, that boundary there. These are, these are the bigger homes, and um, here's the lake of Harveston. These are the smaller ones, and as it, as it gets farther from the lake, there are the bigger homes. That'll make, that'll make more sense here in a second. Okay, here's some underlying data for Harveston. Let's take a look. We have recently sold listings here at the top, and recently listed at the bottom. I've got six rows of data for each. Now these are, this is actual data. It, I don't have the address here that you could look at, but, but these are the actual sizes and the prices you could look at. On your recently sold, check this out. June 1st, 2nd, and 4th. And then here, here at the top, we have some other ones at the end of July. This would explain why in our recently sold you have such a long days on market. Our, our stats there are through the end of August, August 31st. So June, the beginning of June, all the way to the end of the August is when, when these are actually selling. Those took a long time to sell. Remember how I was showing you on the, on the map there, the smaller size, these ones are the small 2,000, 2,100. This one is 1684. And they're getting mid 600s, this one got 765 for the 2,000 square foot there at the top. Now let's look at the recently listed, uh, the most recent just last week, September 8th, and then a couple at the beginning of the month, September 1st. These ones are also on the smaller side, 1,500, 1,600, going for 575, 585. Now I suspect that those will sell a little quicker. Uh, the 2,500 at 739, that also seems fair at a glance, but let's flip over now. Let's look at these top viewed listings. This comes from the same uh, system, my Real Scout property search system, where I, I pulled this report that has the, the neighborhoods. Here's some of these higher price ones, 829, 829, 840, and no surprise, that one was listed June 29th and still for sale. Listed July 31st, still for sale. August 16th for 840. And again, these are these are the bigger ones though, 3675. We'll have to see what happens in Scott's update next month when, when he looks at the harvesting data. On that note, I'll turn it back to Scott, let him finish it out. The next three charts I'm gonna show you look at Temecula from a more holistic perspective. So here is a comparison between Temecula and Marietta and their average home sale prices from month to month over the last year. I wanna point this out because Whereas with Marietta, you can see from May 2022 down to August 2022, there has been a downward trend in sales prices month over month. However, this has not been the case in Temecula. While prices went down a little bit in May, back up a little bit in June, down a little bit in July, and back down low in August, we do not have enough data to say that prices in Temecula are in a downward trajectory. We're just gonna have to wait a few more months to see what happens in this market. Will prices continue to trend downward? But based on this data, it's inconsistent. Prices in Temecula have not trended 
downward. If you're hearing on national news or wherever you are from, maybe in some other location in California where your prices are trending downward, such as in Marietta, which is just a neighboring city to Temecula, it's not necessarily the case in our local market here. Prices simply have not tracked down consistently month over month. This next chart shows Temecula inventory, meaning active available homes to purchase as of August 2022. From July to August, we see our first downward trajectory, and this is normal. Seasonally, as summer comes to a close, fewer and fewer homes are on the market, and we trend downward generally every year into the holidays. So this is not unusual by any stretch of the imagination. What is a bit shocking compared to all the other data that I've shared today is this last chart. This is Temecula's current pending sales as of the end of August 2022. You'll see that point down there at the bottom and the number in the top right says 111. This is the lowest number of total pending sales that Temecula has seen since January 2008, according to the data on InfoSparks. Generally, the lowest pending sales occur in December of any given year during the holidays. And here we are in August 2022 with the fewest pending sales that we have seen in the last 14 years. This isn't to suggest that the real estate market is anything like it was in 2008, but this figure does reinforce the fact that rising interest rates and historically high sales prices have impacted the buying power of consumers. And in conversations with my clients, I know that so many buyers are waiting with bated breath for prices to continue to come down. And while prices have started coming down in the surrounding areas, Temecula itself has not shown a downward trajectory trend for decreasing prices yet. I say yet because we don't know what the future holds. We'll have to wait and see. We found that helpful. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.